Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're gonna meet a solo female van dweller who lives in a souped up Sprinter van conversion. Sarah's van build out has all of the deluxe amenities that allow her to maintain her hobbies on the road and her job as a professor. It was almost like I always lived in secondhand stuff. So buying the Sprinter was also like, no, I deserve to live in the Taj Mahal of vans. <laughs> it's kind of how I looked at it. If you like these kind of stories, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. But right now, let's take a tour of Sarah's van. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah. Welcome to my tiny house on wheels, Big Debbie. For years I'd been thinking about van life. I started feeling that pull of, I need to stop throwing my money down the toilet, of renting, but I can't afford a house. That was really when I was like, I'm getting a van. I made the decision to get a Sprinter. I paint and I play the piano and I have a lot of things, so I need space to store my hobbies. Being the baby of the family, living in a money conscious home, it was almost like I always lived in secondhand stuff. So buying the Sprinter was also like, no, I deserve to live in the Taj Mahal of vans. <laughs> it's kind of how I looked at it. I was on Instagram one night and I was looking at the hashtag van builds. I came across an ad and it said, do you have a van? Are you looking to build it out? Do you want to be on a TV show? I was cast for the show, season two. The timing was impeccable. Picked up my van on December 16th of 2021 and then they wanted to start filming beginning of January, 2022. I was able to say these are my non-negotiables of what I need in the van. And I was able to see the design and sign off on it before they actually started building it. 71K is what I walked away, taxes and everything included, for the cargo. And it's 45K total for the build, of which I put 30K into it, because the show had put 15K. I am a full-time professor. Now I'm fully remote. I teach sports psychology classes, and a lot of it is about when we can be our authentic selves, we perform a lot better. So I feel like even me moving into a van and living this lifestyle and teaching out of a van is me modeling the behavior that I'm teaching. And if there's something that you feel desire towards, but you have some anxiety around, that's probably the direction you need to go. And so being fully remote on the road has been very liberating. This is our van, Big Debbie. She is a 2021 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, a 170 wheelbase 4x4, and she is 28.5 feet long and 6.5 feet wide. Big Deb's gas mileage is about 13 to 14, which isn't the best, but we deal with it. I wanted to show you all her nice roof rack. So we have the double light bars. I can turn those on and it really gives me the ability to see more. I have 200 watts of solar up there, but the rest of it, you could fit two yoga mats, so two people could be doing yoga up there. So it's more of a party deck, we call it. People can get up there. I've had an upwards of eight to nine people up there just kind of sitting off of the edge, having morning coffee. So on this side of the van, we have the smaller windows. This being over the kitchen, so one of the important things about having this was ventilation. So when I'm cooking, I can open the window, turn the fan on above, so it can get all the smoke out of there. And then I also have this really nice, very sturdy ladder that can take you up to the party deck. I also got some new wheels and tires put on this van from what was originally on its stock. So I went with a, a method wheel. I'm taking Big Debbie all over the place. I did the all-terrain KO2s. I chose this blue-gray color for my van because a lot of my design before moving into the van in my homes 
was always built around blues and turquoise. And I loved that journey for me. But again, that moving into this van was all about transitioning into a new phase of my life. So I wanted to honor and say, hey, I, I really honor this blue that I've been leaning into for the past decade of my life. And let me now walk into a new phase, which is walking into my van where I then honor the color green. Green being associated with the heart chakra. How can I use this sacred space of my van, the meditation that I do in there, a lot of the internal work that I do to open myself up more to the world in a loving way. The entire build is built around my keyboard. So all the dimensions of everything else were dependent upon where we were gonna place the keyboard, how high it needed to be for me to be comfortably playing it. This keyboard is 16 pounds, and then obviously all my paints that I have here. So the slide out that we used, it's a really heavy duty slide out. This gives me a lot of comfort to be able to play it and gives me a lot of space to be able to move up and down the keyboard as well, which is really nice. A barrier for an artist is oftentimes taking the materials out and getting things set up. But I just slide it out. I can plug it in back here, put my foot pedal down. Everything is stored in this. And then when I'm done, pack it all back up like a suitcase and then roll it back in. And then what we did here, because obviously I needed some table space to work, is we have a five foot long table, which is wonderful. As you can tell, it is a little bit higher. But what I do like about it is it actually acts as additional countertop space. I still host a lot of people in here and cook for people. And so I can change the length of it. Usually I'll go about here as I'm cooking, put some extra dishes on here. The reason why we went with this being separate from the piano is that when I am cooking, I don't have to worry about spilling anything on top of my instrument. I decided to go with a long kind of chase style bench seat. I actually use this a lot to set up and read, which has been an added bonus that I didn't think of. Underneath me is my toilet. And a lot of people do the composting toilets or a cassette toilet. And I actually chose something that's a lot more cost efficient. It cost me $40. And so it's essentially just a round bucket that has a wag bag. So below the keyboard here, this is Kira's space. I wasn't sure she was gonna like this. She never liked dog beds before moving into the van, but I decided to put this here for her to provide her a sacred space. I knew, okay, if she didn't like this, I could just take the dog bed out, put a curtain across here, build a door, and have actually an indoor garage space. But she loves it, she has claimed it as her own, and it will not be indoor garage space. What we have here is a nice queen size bed. That was one of my non-negotiables is I wanted to have a lot of room. It's been nice having the queen size bed because as we all know with animals, they like to take up about 85 to 90% of the bed and you only get a sliver of it. So at least my sliver is a little bit bigger because it's a queen. This is actually one of my favorite illustrators. Her name's Amanda Oleander. And I chose these five prints from her that actually are very significant to me on my healing journey. So each one kind of uh, depicts a phase in which I've, I've come through and completed. I have two fans in here, two max fans. And so I have one that's above my bed and one that's above the kitchen area. And what that allows is for cross ventilation. And I also have two of these smaller windows in the back. That also helps with ventilation as well. The ceiling here is a nice cedar. I wanted to have the ceilings be a natural wood and then the rest of everything else be white. The natural wood just kind of bringing in that very simplistic kind of outdoorsy vibe. So I have another seat here. I made the decision to have a seat here rather than a closet because I wanted to, if I did have somebody in here having dinner, that we could sit across from one another. And then this particular piece is actually one of my pieces is very near and dear to me. It's called Flower Galaxy. So welcome to the kitchen. As you'll see, here is my sink, which is really nice. If I have a pot here and I need to fill it, boom, easy, super easy. 
So I was on the television show. This van was built in a month time frame. So we were limited to the supplies that we used based on what we could get. So I didn't have the luxury of saying, oh, I really want this tile, um, but it's gonna take three months to get in. Don't get me wrong, I love this tile. I was super stoked to see it, this beautiful, beautiful jade green. I thought I wanted a backsplash again to really capture that very homey vibe. So when you come in, you just feel like you're in a miniature home, a tiny home. All right, so now I want to show you my fridge, which is on slide outs. So this is a Dometic cooler that is 75 quarts. This being a cooler situation that has a fridge um, and a freezer, you can make them both fridge, both freezer if you wanted, you could change it up. And then above the fridge, I have one of my favorite drawers, which is just a really massive one-stop shop for anything you need. Very well organized junk drawer um, is what I call it when people see it. What I have behind this door is actually my electric panel and my heater and my fan, which is really nice. So for the electric panel, it shows me like where my battery's at so I can keep an eye out on that. And I also have a switch here that I can turn my electric on and off for both my outlets and my water heater that I have. And then I have my heater and my fan, making sure that if it is going to be dropping down below freezing, that I make sure that that definitely is turned on so that it keeps my water pump um, warm so that it doesn't freeze. Well, let's head to the back and I'll show you the garage. We have still a multitude of room back here with my garage, which I was kind of surprised by. I thought I was gonna lose a lot of garage space because this right here is my table and my piano. We built in some space to hold my canvases. So you'll see my canvases I have here. These are the ones that I didn't sell before moving into the van. Right here, this is my entire electrical system that is nicely put into this closet. I have 200 hour lithium batteries, a 2000 watt converter. I have my shower here. So this is an outdoor shower situation. So I have my water input here to go to my 40 gallon water tank. So it's been nice having a 40 gallon tank with a dog, as well as having the option for an outdoor shower. I have my water heater here. Another thing that I had to consider too is I have my paintings and are they gonna get wet and so I usually will take towels and hang over them just to protect them and then I'll take a towel and drape it across all my things in the garage so that they don't get wet. It's a shower hose situation so you have a lot of control over where the water is going and it's not like you're just in a bath really flinging water around so it stays pretty localized. I actually find it really refreshing to take an outdoor shower because you can feel the breeze coming in, you can hear all the sounds, the smells, and then you're also cleaning yourself up. And so it's really uh, a nice situation to have. So I really like the outdoor shower. Moving into this van for me was very spiritual and I didn't want it to just be a cluttered closet of things. I wanted it to be a space that is clean, streamlined, and minimal, really being a place that represents the life I want to live, which is one of peace and stillness. I feel like a lot of people that maybe even are watching this are sitting on the sidelines. So taking a moment to sit down and think, what am I actually scared of? And is that actually scary? Or am I scared because other people are telling me I should be scared? When we can start making that delineation and we start practicing being able to notice it, we're able to realize what decisions we need to make for ourselves. Everything about it is authentic to me and it represents a part of my soul that is a physical manifestation of that to the world. I don't want this episode to be about, go get a van, everybody should live in a van. This is what authenticity looks like to me. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.